A major coast-to-coast -coast storm is getting stronger as it moves east. A tornado outbreak is possible in the south, while a blizzard and ice storm will be likely in the northern plains. What is going on? I'm meteorologist Jonathan Kegas, and if you're new here, we talk and track all things weather. We are going to start on the cold side of the system first, talk about how much snow and ice we could see and give you the timeline, and then break down this multi-day severe weather threat that includes the potential for strong tornadoes in the south. Also, if you're watching from the northeast, stick around to the end of the video. This system could go out with a bang and dump a ton of snow for some of the northeast. That's coming up in a couple of minutes. This storm could really be remarkable. Look at this as it really ramps up starting Monday night and really into Tuesday morning. The pink represents ice, the blue represents snow, and then the reds and greens represent the heavy rain and the potential for severe weather overnight into early Tuesday morning, especially right down into Texas and Oklahoma. I'm going to take you region by region in just a second, but wanted to show you the scope. As we move into the early morning hours of Tuesday, that's 8 o'clock. We have an ice storm going on in the morning, western Minnesota into eastern South Dakota. The heavy snow on the back end of that from about Pier, South Dakota, down the front range of the Rockies. And then the main severe weather threat really starts to ramp up as we get into the second part of Tuesday afternoon and into the evening. That's going to be places like Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, western Mississippi. Look at all of the heavy snow on the northwest side of the system. If you are finding this video helpful, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot and it gets this video to more people. Also, I would love to know where you are tuning in from. Please post that in the comments below. As promised, we're gonna start off with my snowfall forecast here and the bullseye is gonna be in this light pink from east of Casper, Wyoming, down to Cheyenne Alliance in the panhandle of Nebraska just to the west of Pier, including Rapid City. Now, for us in Pier, we're going to get a lot of snow. I have you right now at 8 to 16 inches, but there's possibility for more if that changeover from freezing rain and sleet to plain old good snow happens a little quicker. The 8 to 16 marker here, really from northeast Colorado into the north of Denver into central Nebraska, through parts of central Minnesota, north of the Twin Cities, and then towards Lake Superior, and then much of northern Minnesota, and much of North Dakota. There's a secondary bullseye that I do want to point out, really as we move into Tuesday and Wednesday, in around Duluth, Minnesota. You see that light pink again that I've drawn here? Right around Lake Superior, we'll get some lake enhancement as the low starts to back away to really increase our totals and to crush us further but nonetheless, I think right here we're going to have a chance at, at least 16 inches, potentially even eclipsing two feet. And then also, again, in this pink area, I think somebody in here could go north of two feet as well. There's going to be a ton of snow. Now, not only are we going to have snow, but we are going to have ice. That is why our snow totals are really cut down in northeast Nebraska, far southeast South Dakota, western Minnesota, and then northwest Iowa. In here... We have ice storm warnings in play for eastern South Dakota and western Minnesota for the potential for significant ice accumulation that could cause some big-time issues with the power outages, not even to mention travel. It's going to be treacherous. You don't want to go out in that. Speaking of travel, this continues. It's like those infomercials. But wait, there's more. We have the likelihood of a blizzard getting going in this part where I'm going to draw, in western Nebraska into northern Colorado, eastern Wyoming, and then up into North Dakota, and for us into eastern Montana. Wind gusts at times could be 40, 50, maybe even 60 miles an hour, so visibility is going to be pretty much near zero in addition to the heavy snow. Be safe. Again, it's advised not to get out and travel in this stuff. Here is the hour-by-hour hour forecast. The pink represents the ice, the green and red represents the very heavy rainfall, and then the blue represents the snow. Watch what happens here. This is starting off at about midnight, and we already have the ice coming down from about Pier and then places east, including Sioux Falls to Watertown, Fergus Falls, Minnesota, and then up towards Grand Forks, the heavy snow falling west of Pier at this time. Watch what happens, though, as we get into the morning. That ice expands towards southern Minnesota. We start to see that changeover happen toward Pier, South Dakota, and then all the way down 
towards Pueblo into Denver, eastern Wyoming, and then up towards to the west of us in Grand Forks. But all of this blue is very heavy snow. There is a saying in the weather world, sometimes you have to smell the rain to get the heaviest snow. And I think that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a very sharp cutoff here. Note where we have the pink where we still have some sleet going on just to the east of us in Pierre. But this very dark blue up in here, we're going to get crushed with snow here. All right, taking you further out into the future now, you see the spiral here. That area of low pressure is pretty much whirl rolling right towards Hastings. And North Platte, the heaviest snow falls on the northwest side of the area of low pressure, which is right in here. And that's exactly, again, where we have the highest totals, those jackpot snow totals, taking you further out into the future here. Now we're looking at Tuesday evening. This is about 5 to 6 o'clock. We are snowing heavily from Watertown to Pier to Rapid City to the Panhandle of Nebraska. We have ice, though, really cranking up in northeast Iowa to the west of Madison, Wisconsin, and then up to the Twin Cities with very heavy snow closer toward St. Cloud. Further out into the future, this isn't done. This is one of those long-duration events. The heavy snow now moving up into Duluth, really continuing into Duluth, and then we still see that spin, that area of low pressure is about right here. Wednesday afternoon. This is Wednesday afternoon, and we are still talking about snow, albeit lighter than what it's been, falling in places like Aberdeen, Watertown, Rapid City as well, as that area of low pressure kind of worked its way off towards the north and east. I wanted to show you the maximum wind gusts here of this event. This is through Tuesday evening, and this is exactly where we have the blizzard warnings, the combination of the very heavy snow and the strong winds. Well, we're getting up into that red color, that's 50 mile per hour wind gusts. When you see that brown color here, we're talking 60 to maybe even 65 mile per hour gust right in the panhandle of Nebraska and then through the front range of the Rockies here. Now, to get a blizzard, it's really hard to verify a blizzard, but there is a set definition. You're going to the sustained winds. You need to sustain 35 mile per hour winds and have visibility reduced a quarter mile or less for three consecutive hours. It's not even about the amount of snow that falls. You just need the visibility and the wind component. And it looks like we are going to see that right through here. That's where we have the blizzard warnings in play for this event. Here is the severe weather threat. This is the day one threat. This is going to be for tonight into early Tuesday. There are four days where we could have really nasty severe weather, all because of the same system bringing that blizzard, bringing that ice storm to the northern plains and upper Midwest. So this is into early Tuesday morning with the main threat from Wichita towards Amarillo into Oklahoma City, especially in this yellow shaded area. That's that level two out of five on the severe weather scale. This is now for Tuesday afternoon into the early morning hours of Wednesday. This is no doubt the main event when it comes to the severe weather, the day two here. And you see that enhanced color here, this orange color as drawn by the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. Again, this is where we're focused on for the potential for those strong, long track tornadoes later Tuesday afternoon into the evening. I'm going to show you where the next round of severe weather could be as we get into Wednesday afternoon and Thursday first. And then we're going to come back to this area and we are going to break it down. I'm going to show you future radar and when you need to make sure that you're paying close attention. Moving on, now we're going to see that severe weather threat shift towards Jackson, Mississippi. Baton Rouge points to the east, including southern Mississippi and Alabama, and into the panhandle of Florida. This is for Wednesday morning into early Thursday morning. Enough already. It's still not over. Look at this. Severe threat moves from about Tallahassee on Thursday morning toward Jacksonville, closer to Savannah, Georgia, and then as we get deeper into the afternoon and evening on Thursday, that severe weather threat then moves towards Tampa, Orlando, getting into Melbourne. All right, I want to show you the future radar, especially for our friends in the Deep South here, to show you how the severe weather threat could unfold Tuesday afternoon. I think Tuesday morning starts off with a couple of downpours, maybe a few showers, nothing severe at that point. Watch what happens, though, as we get into the afternoon. This is going to be now... As we move beyond 2 or 3 o'clock central time, note the darker reds pop up. The coverage of those storms starts to increase a little bit. 
and then we start to get that look of a tornado outbreak. It's these guys here, these kidney bean shaped storms that are isolated from one another. These are the ones that can take advantage of that primed environment with a lot of wind shear and produce those strong long track tornadoes. You see them down here as well into eastern Texas. Again, we don't want these things to be by themselves or isolated because if they are, that's when we are going to have that real potential to get back into that tornado outbreak setting like we had just two weeks ago in parts of Louisiana in Mississippi. I want to take you further into the future now as we get into the evening. This is going to be towards 6, 7 o'clock. And that threat for some is going to ramp up. Look, we have some nasty thunderstorms to the west of Baton Rouge forecast as we get again into that really 7, 8, 9 o'clock hour even right up and down the Mississippi River there. So again, just keep that in mind. Once we get beyond 2 or 3 o'clock, in eastern Texas, central Louisiana, western Mississippi, our severe weather threat starts to ramp up, and the potential for those strong, long-lived tornadoes are going to be evident, are going to be present there, really, through the evening and even into the wee hours of Wednesday morning as this line moves into western Mississippi. All right, my friends in the northeast, I mentioned earlier in the video that I do think this storm will go out with a bang Thursday through the weekend and dump a ton of snow into parts of the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. I think the focus for the heaviest snow, though, is going to be inland. You see where I have this purple color drawn? That's the potential for significant snow. I'm going to fine-tune a snow map for you over the next couple of days. But this is the potential in purple here, really from southern Pennsylvania through State College into Scranton to Albany, Portland, Maine, Bangor, Maine, and then northwest for six-plus inches of snow. I think that number is going to be conservative. I think a lot of spots in here could get north of a foot of snow from Thursday into the start of the weekend as it is going to be very nasty all up in here or very nice if you love the snow as we move from Thursday again to Saturday. The one thing you're going to notice, there's nothing highlighted in the bigger cities here. I don't think we're getting the snow or at least a lot of snow in Boston, New York City, Philly, Baltimore, Washington. And I'm going to show you why. This is the European solution, how this could all come together. As the storm is fizzling out in the Great Lakes region, another system is going to take over. It's really going to transfer its energy. But in between, you see the rain in green, the potential for some ice in the Laurel Highlands down into the mountains of West Virginia in Virginia, and then back up again to the west of State College where it's already snowing. This is as of Thursday afternoon. Watch what happens, though, as we go into the future and why I think we're going to see some of those bigger totals. As we see this, as we go forward in time, this is going to be Friday afternoon. We start to take advantage of some of that colder air, but notice this little, these isobars, the lines of equal pressure start to close off. We're going to have an area of low pressure developing right along or just off the coast and then move off in this direction. For the big snows along the I-95 corridor, our big-time nor'easters for the snow lovers, you want the area of low pressure about here, and then that brings our big snows to New Jersey, to the Delmarva, and then right along the coast, there's just going to be a ton of warm air coming in from the Atlantic to keep most of this precip for the event rain, again, closer to the coast, but just inland. Notice all the blue. Big-time snow, I think in upstate New York, even central New York, back through Vermont and New Hampshire, and then going forward into the future, that is going to push up into Maine. Again, this is going to be now Friday night into Saturday where this storm ramps up again, taking advantage of some of the relatively warm water of the Atlantic Ocean and then blowing up. But wait, there's more. As that system pulls away, the wind direction shifts. So Buffalo, Syracuse, we are back in that lake effect snow machine again with that breeze out of the southwest and west, cranking up again some heavy snow. Also Erie, Pennsylvania, some big time snow there. Again, we could be measuring the snow in feet again in and around Buffalo and then off of Lake Ontario as this system pulls away. We've been talking about this storm for the last couple of days as being a coast-to-coast, -coast, long duration event. Again, we just got blasted on the West Coast by this system. And now all the way into Sunday, this system is still indirectly affecting 
the eastern third of the United States. And that is why this channel is called Weather Whiplash. We just got whiplash from going back to the west, to the north, to the south, and then into the east and the changing weather in between. Do keep in mind that we are going to go live several times on Tuesday. We're going to check it out in the morning, the environment for the severe weather threat. And we're going to check in on our friends in the upper Midwest and northern plains as we will be seeing that snow and ice come down heavily at times. And then we'll likely go live in the early afternoon to check up on how parameters are coming together, see if there are any watches issued from the National Weather Service. And then we will be live for the main severe weather threat as well on Tuesday evening. So we're likely going to be live at least two or three times to make sure you guys are prepared and have something to follow again. So we would love it if you subscribe to this channel. If you're a fan of talking and tracking the weather, you've come to the right place. Again, there's no garbage here. We're not hyping anything up here. So we would love to have you on board. I would love to have your reports. Again, please hit that subscribe button. If you hit the alert bell, you will be alerted to any time we post new content or go live. Again, especially if you are living in the Deep South, I want to make sure that you are getting your warnings no matter how you get them. If you watch your local news, download your respective local news app, at least the weather app in that, that will give you those alerts right to your phone. Just have a way to stay informed, especially in the Deep South, on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and then gradually pushing east into Thursday. Stay safe, guys. We've got you posted again. We'll be live a lot on Tuesday. Hope to see you in the chat.